meantime, uh, in studio with us right now is, is a guy that, uh, if we're not careful, he'll body slam us uh, one at a time right out the door. And that includes our producer, Dylan, too, because he can. That's the reason why you body slam, because you can. Shane Heimberger, our guest here, pro, uh, the business analyst, uh, career one stop. Shane, good morning to you. Good morning, Rob. And thank you for having me in once again. This has become my semi annual uh, tradition. I do two of these a year. And every time I call you and ask for the opportunity to get the airwaves, you're always very gracious, and I appreciate it. I that. don't want you to body slam. Uh, well, I don't blame you. All right. Who, who wants to be suplexed? <laughs> hey, uh, Shane, in the past when I've always introduced you, there's always uh, workforce and a job fair of some sort or other. What's your connection with workforce? What's well, uh, what I work for, I work for the Region 7 Workforce Development Board, which is slightly different than workforce, which is primarily like the unemployment office. Mm -hmm. Region 7 Workforce, we help people with uh, on-the-job training positions and transitional uh, job positions, incumbent worker, displaced worker programs. So if there's anybody out here who's uh, receiving any type of benefits from the state, uh, if you're on unemployment or you have SNAP benefits and so forth like that, chances are pretty good that we're able to help you not only learn a career we can get you placed someplace we can help you pay for that career we can help you with uniforms and uh, transportation and and help you with car repairs there's a lot of great benefits to what we do specifically the the, the term workforce kind of gets tied up a little bit too broadly mm -hmm. so our specific office is the workforce development board which is a division of the career one stop which is again helping people improve their overall quality learn learn how to do trades get employment in trades and we can help the employers with the expenses of training those employees and with paying those employees for finite periods of time that's what i do in addition to the job fairs on may 15th will you have extra staff on for any incumbents who have lost in the primary election and now looking for a new gig <laughs> Yeah, well, they'll probably have to set up a different uh, different event for that. whole different thing. Okay. You right. have a, you, there is a job fair coming up. Is it May 8th? Yes, May 8th. Next, uh, well, two days from today. What am I thinking? I'm mm -hmm. thinking it's next week. I'm lost. In Snuck this up month. on everybody. This, this month's a mess. But, yeah, Wednesday, May the 8th at uh, the Berkeley uh, 2000 Rec Center at 273 Woodbury Avenue right here in Martinsburg. Uh, we start off. Uh, we have... Um, nearly 100 employers who are going to be joining us that day. Hopefully we get the full 100, but you got to be, unfortunately, we lose a couple. In the, they're going to come, then they're not going to come. Mm -hmm, give or take. That type of thing. And we're expecting, uh, back in October, we had 250-plus job seekers uh, visit us that day. So we have a good flow of traffic coming through, a lot of variety of different types of employers and I, I wrote it down tried to make it catchy sound in here while i was sitting out in the car we got retail restaurants and rentals we got warehousing we got the military we got unions and we got utilities and everything in between coming setting up a table we invite these businesses to bring their representatives bring their best looking materials look we asked the army to bring a tank sweet whether or not we're going to get that or not i don't know but we always try to set up a great display and and get some attention from from the folks coming in do live in-person interviews still i still think that that is more important than anything else as much as we rely on the online world now and everyone can go on these different websites and apply for work meeting somebody in person is everything can, can help separate you from the pack absolutely how you look how you present yourself are you making eye contact do you do you seem like you know what you're talking about? Do you talk a lot with your hands like I do? People are looking for that, but different employers need different things. And I think there's something for everybody here. Bill? Yeah, building upon that, uh, Shane, uh, we have at least one large company in the area, Macy's, that depend upon seasonal employment uh, as well as a year-round employment. Do you, do you, are you focused to any one part of your job uh, job fair on seasonal employees? Uh, I don't focus on them. Um, I invite them. Uh, they're always invited. Actually, I know the guy over there who does most of the hiring at Macy's. And one half the year, he's he, he wants to hire everybody possible. And the other half the year, he doesn't want to hire anybody. Yeah. So I don't specifically focus for temporary or seasonal because I think that kind of I mean, I'm okay with it, but I think ultimately what we're trying to do is trying to help people find full-time work. 
Yeah, for job training, uh, certain, certain, some of the jobs require much more specialized training than do others. What training do you provide in Region 7? Okay, in my office specifically, well, we work with, with multiple different employers. My job is to get the, the, um, the employer interested in the program. The easy, quickest way to get somebody interested in a program is what? Offer them money. We are giving them money to help them pay and train their potential employees. Now, we don't dictate who those employees are. I mean, that is completely up to you. Admiral, if you're if you're starting up a boat company here and you wanted to have certain people who want to work on boats, and you had someone who you wanted to hire who met the qualifications for our office to be able to help, you should absolutely send them to us, and we will uh, we will vet them, put them through the training and the program that we knew to get fit so they can get certified in being a boat builder. That's what we do at our office. We don't choose your employees. You select your employees. You're their boss. So you identify training modes where you can go to uh, to get specific training for a particular type of job. Sure, absolutely. I mean, we, we work with uh, Rumsey. We work with we work with Valley College. You know, we work with Eastern College out of Moorfield. I mean, we're working with these schools that are um, geared towards technical training because everyone's not a natural student per se so there's a lot of things the trades are hurting more than anything else and i get that from the union guys um who i speak with on a regular basis like we're really hurting for people who are working in the trades we need more people in the trades. they got to get younger yeah, absolutely they're yeah. aging out i mean some of these guys are yeah well geez i'm 55 65 they're, they're getting ready to yeah. get retirement age and um we need to be able to bring young people now. Um, like for example, my own son's 20 years old. And he's a welder because he wasn't a natural student. He's smart, but he wasn't like a, a paper smart mm -hmm. kind of. But he can apply, put his hands on anything. He can fix anything and make it work. So we we really need to bring the people into the trades more. Absolutely, positively. By the way, Dan Bell <clears throat> says hello. Is this the one and only Shane Shadows? You 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 got him, Dan. How are you, my friend? Johnny. When we think about job fairs, I think, at least when I think about job fairs, I normally think about younger folks who are just you know, transitioning from high school or college or whatever. Um, but then we hear stories a couple months ago, the two big factories that shut down. So we have some mid-career folks who have suddenly find themselves without jobs. Are there opportunities that you all focus on for that level, the 30, 40-year-old mid-career types who are looking to change over as far as at the job fair uh, you know, I mean there's always an option we work that, that person an individual you just described is a displaced worker and that's a program those are programs that we are desperately trying to get, use our funds towards to retrain and redirect people who have lost their jobs because the, like you say the factory shut down or uh, things of that nature those are the people we want there's a lot of ability for us to help them and help a business help them so yeah, we do have a lot of programs in that direction. So I'm glad that you brought that up. Thank you very much. And that'll probably please my boss uh, listening that I got to use that, that term, the displaced worker program. Is that a different program than what we've talked about so far? Well, well, that, well it's, there's several different almost sub programs to our, in our office, the on the job training is sort of one thing. Displaced workers are going to get a different type of, you know, attention we we have schooling we have trade work there's a lot of benefits with through our office what's the mothership what's what's the main office that all of these others are a part of oh we're all part of the career one stop the region seven workforce development board uh the 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 home office is in moorfield west virginia um and that's run by a gentleman by the name of tj van meter who I'm, I'm very proud to say is you know the executive director and i'm proud to work for him uh, we oversee eight counties, so we're 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 covering Eastern Panhandle here in Pendleton, Mineral, Hardy, Grant. I forgot one. Uh, we have eight counties in which we're using all these different programs. So different individuals may call us at different times of the day or different days of the week and so forth. This is what I'm looking to do. Is there any way that you can help me? Or uh, sometimes the the business themselves are not aware of the programs because they think when I walk into the door, I'm just throwing them a sales pitch. I'm just like, hey, I'm trying to sell you something. No, I'm trying to give you something. I'm trying to provide you with something that you don't realize that you have. These government grants that we work with them date all the way back to FDR. 
But a lot of people, they don't know that they're there. And it's just a simple matter sometimes of sitting down with myself, let me explain to you what the programs are and how they can benefit you. And you can save thousands of dollars. It's expensive to train employees, several thousand dollars per employee. So if that guy gets up after two or three days, I mean, you've kind of lost that that money and that, that effort. But if you're getting a little bit of help with that, why would you turn it down? Shane, you said the last job fair you had 250 job seekers. Yes. Of that 250, how many made contact and got a job? I think, uh, I, I don't have the exact numbers on that, but I mean, I do know that there were several different reports of businesses who were this time around saying, I don't know that we're going to participate this time because we're not really hiring right now. But then they came back at the end of the conversation and said, well, you know what? We hired, you know, Cindy out of that last job fair and and she's done a great job you never know where you're going to find your next candidate you know it's just like baseball you're going to walk out into a field one day and you're going to see some kid who's like wow he might be the next star you might have just stumbled upon him i don't know well a thousand years ago when i was hunting down my first job i mm-hmm. had the the advice was always to make sure you wore a suit make sure that you had a resume that was no more than two pages long and you had the objective and the you know all this this sort of thing the, the 1980 era job seeking I got you toolkit mm-hmm. what is that toolkit now what should it, people be bringing with them a lot less um, I actually my my immediate supervisor my director Peter Christensen teaches an entire class on resume writing uh, it's one of the parts of our of our program but um, you should be have about a, a, a half a page to a page of things that kind of gets to the point doesn't drag on too long um, the the standards in terms of dress code yeah I'm kind of with you, but they've kind of relaxed that. Most employers are just glad to see people show up wearing shirts. Who can pass a drug test. (laughs) Yes. And that that seems primary, but Mm -hmm. not exclusive. Mm -hmm. Uh, Are you going to be here? Are you going to be reliable? That's, again, comes back to my point earlier about just discussing being present and and doing an in-person interview. Because now they can see you. Anybody can put words on a page and percent and say, well, this guy looks like a great candidate. Well, I mean, not always everything doesn't assimilate to the same things. You might have the knowledge and the ability to do the job. You might not have the personality. Give me the uh, typical demographic of who shows up for these things. Anywhere from 18 to 80. I mean, I've seen it very broad and especially now with the way the economy is, I'm not trying to get political, but there are people who are working longer now than they ever had to at least in my lifetime, and it's become very apparent and necessary for some people to continue working past their retirement ages. So we're, I have people, you know, older than, much older than I am, people 65, 75 years old, just sometimes just looking for part-time employment. And some of them are genuinely looking for a full-time job because they haven't worked in so many years. They've drained through their retirement funds and so forth like that. I mean, this is a rough time to live in this country. And so the demographics very broad. We have major companies that have moved into Berkeley and Jefferson Mm -hmm. County over the last 10 years and more that are still coming. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yes. are, Are all of those folks still looking to bring people on? Sometimes, uh, and sometimes they're the hardest ones to get a hold of, at least for me, because they have their own, I guess they, they have their own hiring processes sometimes, so it's kind of hard to break down that wall to speak to somebody directly that comes from a major, major company that moves into the panhandle and say, hey, this is what we can do, and this is what our job fairs are set up for. They do a lot of their own in-house type of stuff, sometimes daily. But I've also found that some of these companies – they don't they're not really looking for full-time employees they're yeah i'm not going to say any names specifically but there's one particular company i think that their entire business model revolves around getting as much work as they can out of as many people as they can during a week without really providing them with enough to live off of or enough hours to live off of so it's like if i got this guy doing 18 and this guy's doing 15 and this guy's doing 20 well i don't have to pay the benefits out 
for what I would have to pay for someone who's working 40 or 40 plus. Picking up on that's that. That's disturbing because these folks are moving in here making promises about bringing so many jobs, and that's how they're getting their pilot programs approved. And you're telling me some of them aren't living up to their end of the bargain, Bill. Yeah, and I was going to pick up on that, Rob. Uh, you said you had not mentioned that employer by name, and I don't think you should. But for your employees, the job seekers, do you, if there is a questionable employer, do you some way let the job seeker know? Um, it... <clears throat> Softly, I guess, it, because I mean, some people are just looking to work 15 hours a week. Yeah. So every, everyone's not, you know, shooting for the for the end zone. But put it another way, do you feel it's your obligation to be totally upfront with every job seeker and every employer? And if there is a mismatch, would you let the job seeker know? Um. I think if it if it was obvious that it was a there was a huge disparity, I probably would. But it, ultimately, I don't feel like it. I my my job is to try to do my best to try to match them up, to see if they feel like they're a good fit. Um, for me to be able to step into that role and say I don't think you would be able to do that, or I, I don't I don't think that they, I'm nowhere near qualified enough to tell people what they are and aren't capable of doing. So I to, for the job fair that's, that's mm -hmm. coming up, which is on May 8th? Maybe. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, is there a list that online somewhere where people can look at who's going to be there and what jobs are available from the various exhibitors? One of my very, that's one of my very most frequently asked questions. And I usually respond to it as it's always subject to change. So it's hard for me. I mean, I can tell you so-and-so will be here, but if I really do, and then they end up having to back out at the last moment because they had their own shortages or whatever. Then I end up looking like I promised something I couldn't deliver. So I try to keep it. Hey, listen, we got a lot of variety here. There's a lot of big businesses, small businesses, a lot of opportunity. And I leave it at that because if I provide a whole list, and that's, and that's what people actually do request. Will you, will you send me a list? Well, I mean, I'm kind of pulling the, the rabbit out of the hat a little early. Yeah. And on one hand and on the other hand, if I can't deliver something, I don't I don't want to be that guy. Shane, what's the going rate now that people are paying, generally speaking, to hire somebody? Oh, some of these jobs are coming up eighteen, twenty dollars an hour and, and plus for you know, what I would wouldn't say it's particularly skilled labor. I mean long hours and not and hard work, but not you know, like twenty years ago, if you were making eighteen dollars an hour, I mean you were Bringing it in. You were a top of the line guy, and it's it, unfortunately it's the reality of the current economic climate. Is anybody advertising a job that's paying eight seventy five the state minimum wage anymore? <laughs> no, I don't think so. But some of them, some businesses have been a little slow coming around to the idea. Uh, what I've also seen a lot of is like now that they have to increase so many wages to, a, in some cases, they've had to double their wages for some of these places in the last year or two. They're carrying fewer people because they're like, well, you know, we used to carry 20 at this spot, but if I got to, if I'm going to carry, you know, 20 people at $15 an hour, what am I going to carry at $18 an hour? Well, probably two or three people less. You mentioned that there was one employer who was a little creative with the way they were working the hours. So they didn't have to pay benefits. Are most not that way that you most come in aren't. contact with? Most aren't. Especially here, most of the people that we deal with here in the panhandle are the smaller business people, and I'm not trying to pigeonhole the bigger business people one corner or another, but the smaller business people are very above board. I mean, I've never, it, I'm more likely to be turned away by a bigger company just because they have a, a different structure than a smaller company who's going, I'm looking for a way to stay within the framework of the law but try to create more jobs and more availability for people to work for me and I can be more productive. I, I've ran into almost nobody here in the Panhandle area on a smaller business scale who's given me any trouble whatsoever. They've been, all been wonderful. You had 250 last time. Do you free register this time? And my question is, how many do you expect to have this time? Well, I'm hoping for at least that many. And if we can push it up that much, that much further up, it's hard to grab numbers, but I mean, if, if we could increase by 25 or so uh, job seekers, I, I think that that's a positive, especially during during the spring. The winter is always a little heavier, but again, it all just kind of depends on the needs of the people more than anything else.
So I'm, I'm hoping we get to see 300 plus. So logistically at the at the job fair, people show up. What are the hours? First of all, oh, we, uh, well, we start for businesses. We start our setup at 10 o'clock. It opens up for uh, the public at 11. When you walk in the uh, the main door, you will be directed by uh, one of my uh, colleagues to uh, register in our kiosk. That way, we have your information on hand. We can keep an accurate count of the individuals who came in, what counties they came in from, and so forth like that. And it runs until about three o'clock, and then it starts to slowly slowly pack up so then for the candidate potential candidate who who comes in is he presented with a list and then do you go and, and get on make an appointment with no the... it's it's an open floor it's, okay. it's completely open floor with as many uh, of the tables full and they try to we try to keep it as tight as possible everyone brings their you know represented with their own uh, uh, front office people or, or hiring people they bring their own tablecloths with their their name brand on it whatever literature they may want to pass out of course you know the swag someone's always passing away a foam football or a frisbee or because that's the kind of stuff that kind of keeps you know mm -hmm. people's attention but yeah you just you, it's an open floor there's not a list provided it's just you walk to each individual table as you wish there's no time limit on it how long you're in front of anybody um if, if you're interested you sit down there are extra tables will be available if a business, if you wanted to get off to the side and do an in-person interview, if the employer was prepared to do that, there's plenty of room to do that as well. Just a very open, casual, easygoing, no pressure type of atmosphere. Shane, chance to review it all right now in a minute. Give us the who, what, when, where, why, how. Who, what, when, where, why, how. It's the Spring 2024 Job Fair, Wednesday, May the 8th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Berkeley County Rec Center, 273 Woodbury Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Set up for business and begin at 10 a.m. 100 employers on site, in-person interviews, resume specialists on site as well. Do not miss your opportunity to join us this Wednesday. I feel like there should be a smash-up derby at the end of this or something. <laughs> He's, he's a natural, Rob. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Shane. Thank you.